And we're live. Fat buddy. It's our special jet guest T'Challa. Yeah. What's up guys? Whoops. Ruby here. It's time for another unboxing. Thank you for joining in. We're actually a couple days late, as you guys know. Hold on, I'm flip this over so you can see me. Hi, 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 Ruby here. We're a couple days late because we had such a challenge with our supply this month. As you guys know, the avian flu hit a couple months ago and it finally hit the meat industry just in these last few weeks. So there's a, a shortage with chicken and other poultry items. And so we had to switch a few things out. We were hoping to have a new product uh, released in this month's box, but we had to move it around. And now I'm gonna show you what's in box number 87. Hi, Viera. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment question mark below so I don't miss them in your comments because I'm gonna flip this back over so I can show you what's in the lineup. All right, so we're gonna start with our add-ons to the box. We've got our meatballs, which is our pork recipe. This is actually a new recipe for us. We started um, adding our fur as a source of fiber, but it also comes with your liver, other secreting organ, your oily fish, and your uh, fur for fiber. So you'll see that updated in the new cards that we're adding. T'Challa, you wanna give this a shot? I gotta keep them busy. Looks like that might have frozen. Sorry about that. As you guys may have seen in our stories, T'Challa did just get neutered. You'll notice these are a little bit darker than usual. But let's see what T'Challa thinks. There you go, buddy. Good boy. So he got neutered earlier this week and has been on house rest house arrest like I like to refer to it that has been very very challenging but thankfully we've got a super chew here handy to keep him busy this is a pig trotter this is the back foot the front foot is a little bit shorter those are the ones you may have seen in our secret shop but the back foot is at least six to eight inches long this is a pretty hefty chew and this is one that you're going to want to probably feed in several chew sessions it's huge. I'm going to take it out since we're feeding it to him anyway. I want to show you a couple things. Believe it or not, the petty toes are in fact digestible. There are nails and stuff on here, but everything in here can be eaten. A lot of times our dogs will leave this backbone right here behind, just like they often do with larger bones, and that's totally normal for them. If they leave it behind, just go ahead and toss it. Pig feet is what's most commonly used to make bone broth because it's so gelatinous. It's all that collagen and glucosamine is what makes that jiggle jiggle bone broth. But that this is what we used, like to dry into our super chews because they're um, so long. But if you do have some leftovers, I'm sorry, baby, you're not getting <laughs> this dude is drooling like crazy. I'm sorry, you're not getting this. But you can smell it. Wait, leave it. Good boy. Let me give you a let me give you a meatball for baiting so kindly. A few of these out. These meatballs are lifesavers too. All right, hopping into the box. I'm trying to keep a, an eye out for comments. So if I miss them, make sure you use that um, question function right there so I don't. So jumping into my box, can we just for a second admire my beautiful jalapenos? I'm new to fruits and gardening and veggies, but this has been <laughs> a uh, success for me. All right, jumping in. What else we got here? That Nami vibe says, how old does the dog need to be? So you can start feeding our treats and shoes as soon as your dog is weaned off of their mama's milk. Duck feet. This is our light chew of the month. You can see we're going through our packaging transition. So we've got our new cards in here. And keep in mind, all the new cards have this QR code so we can update, update those uh, real time anytime we learn new information or the sourcing changes. These duck feet come from our Northern California suppliers. It's a small family farm that supplies most of California. Uh, Northern California and their restaurants with their duck products, especially the Chinese restaurants that like to use chicken feet and duck feet in some of their dishes. 
I'm gonna give this to the to Chala. So you can see this is a light chew. And so for a light chew uh, for a dog that's about 80 pounds, this is not going to last too, too long. And T'Challa is a gulper, so there's a very big difference in how he chews this. But I'll give this to him to keep him busy until we move on to the next product. Sit. Good boy. Moving on. Oh, thank you so much for using the question function. I see it popping up. So Duckbeat is our light chew of the month. Next up, we've got our grass-fed beef liver. I was so, so happy to be able to switch to grass-fed beef liver. For a long, long time, we used conventional beef um, in, our, in our boxes because it was just, frankly, cost prohibitive to use grass-fed. But beef liver, any liver is gonna be your highest value treat this is what a lot of trainers use for training because any organ meat is going to give you the most bang for its buck. It's the most nutritionally rich part of your um, dog's food. And so that's why these are the liver is a necessary component for any real food diet. And even if you check the ingredients of your kibble, if it's a good kibble, you're going to find that there's liver in there because this is a must have. I like it because it's super easy to split up just like that. So if you are doing some training, you can break these into really, really small pieces because it's so rich. We don't want to feed too much at once. Generally, a good rule of thumb to start with is to feed per day a paw so size amount. So if your dog's paw is this big, that's all you're feeding for the day. T'Challa's paws, hold on bud are a little bit bigger. Let's show them. Let's show them your paw size. You see that right here? That is the size that we want to be feeding. Good job, buddy. So that's the beef lover. This is one that's going to be great. Wait for training. Hold on. There you go. Take it. Take it right here, buddy, in my hand. Look. Good boy. <laughs> All right, so that is the organ meat of the month. If you're just joining in, we are unboxing number 87, which just came out this last Monday. Got a few new items in here that you haven't seen before just because we haven't been able to source it. So those are coming back around. Beef liver was the organ meat. We have our pork meatballs as our meatball of the month. Our pork trotter for our super chew duck feet as our light chew. For our seafood, we've got capelin. So capelin is part of the smelt family. This is a small oily fish, relatively small. These are about five inches long. And when we say small, the reason why we want to feed uh, oily fish that are smaller is because they are lower on the food chain. And what that means is they're eating mostly plankton and other vegetation on the bottom of the ocean floor and they aren't, they are being consumed by other animals. The bigger the animal is, the more they have heavy metal toxins like mercury in their blood. And that's something that we want to steer clear of because we are all trying to detoxify from the um, metals in the environment. But this is what makes this boy's coat look so shiny. Don't you have a beautiful coat, T'Challa? Ultrich, Ultrich. Oh, you forgot your Turkish? Sit. Good boy. We really like feeding that small oily fish or any type of omega-3 fish in our daily food. Even if you're not feeding a fresh food diet, adding in omega-3s is going to be really, really important. For our muscle meat of the month, we've got pork heart. Pork is a lean meat, believe it or not. It is fattier, especially the cuts that we like to consume. But the heart, this is one of my favorite treats to make and to feed. It breaks up so, so easily. And pork heart is one of those things that you can get at your local Asian 
or Mexican market that we have here in, in California. These are great for training. And the reason why we want to keep heart in the diet is because it's a really great source of taurine. And you guys have been following the DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy in the news and dogs suffering from heart disease. It is because they're deficient in taurine. So heart is one of the highest sources of taurine. Sit. Sit, T'Challa. Good boy. Did I say that? Okay. All right. We're excited. Off. Get off. Off. T'Challa down. Is that a good down? All right. You're getting lucky today. Good boy. All right. Before I move on, let me check out these questions. Let's see, how old does a dog need to be for the pig leg? So again, they can have our treats and chews as soon as they're weaned off of their mama's milk. But when you're feeding super chews, I recommend that your dogs have their adult teeth grown in. So at least around eight months years old is when that happens for both the smaller and larger breeds. Great question. If they do eat the pig foot, their adult teeth, that doesn't mean, um, that they can't enjoy it. That just means that they're probably not going to be able to get through the whole thing. This boy is waiting so patiently. Meatballs also break up like butter. These are good for training as well. There you go, Bubba. All right. Good question. So yes, puppies can have both the treats and the chews. For the super chews, these are like super hefty. So unless your dog is a very aggressive chewer, which doesn't really happen until after they come into their adult years, unless they're a much larger breed, then I would hold off on the super chews until they have their adult teeth in. Our next chew is pig skin. Probably notice that we have a lot of pork in this month's box. Unfortunately, because of our sourcing challenges, this was the best combination we could put together. This pig skin is the same skin used to make chicharrones, if you guys have ever heard of that. Um, my Latino friends or my Asian Filipino friends probably have heard of that. It is a common staple uh, snack that we have growing up. My favorite thing about the skins is that they sort of curl up on the side. So this is something that's going to uh, make this chew a little bit more challenging. And as you might imagine, if this is my dog's mouth and these are his teeth and he's trying to bite down on this, there's gonna be a lot of scraping off any built up plaque or tartar. So this is one of my favorite chews for that. We do trim off the extra fat so that this isn't quite a fatty chew, but you might find a few pieces that have the trimmings on. There's three pigskins to a bag and they've all got a little bit of a curl to them. Another thing you can do with your pigskin is use this as a plate. I love adding like a nice layer of plain Greek yogurt right here on the bottom, sprinkle on some blueberries, some treats, or even their raw food or their kibble, stick it back in the freezer. And this becomes basically a DIY dinner plate, an edible dinner plate. You can have that in a sec, babe. There you go. And then last but not least, we have our heavy chew. I do see your questions coming in. This is beef trachea. Now, one of my favorite things on the menu is beef trachea because it's so incredibly versatile. There's several things you can do with the trachea. You can feed it just like this, as is. You can turn it into a cannoli, putting their food inside here and taking this one level up, right? This is a chew that we consider a heavy chew. And by the way, you'll notice our, our cards are changing. We're going through a bit of transition, but all of the new cards have this QR code that you can go directly to to read more information. The reason why we moved to these cards is because we wanted to stop using so much adhesive to make our bags more recyclable. So that was a big move for us and we're small so we couldn't make the switch cold turkey. 
but what we are doing is going through a transition these next couple of months so we can make our bags and packaging a bit more environmentally friendly you waiting there you go okay so back to the beef trachea you can put food in this freeze it make it a cannoli it takes it one level up so this is a heavy i would say it's not quite a super but it will make it a little bit more challenging I think I've gotten through all of them. So it's time to answer some of your questions. How much is this box? So this whole setup right here with the three bags of treats and the three bags of chews, this is just $37. We carry these at our farmer's markets and any special events for $10 a piece. So though six bags is 60 bucks, but you can get this whole setup right here for just $37. You can add on your super chews for 10 and you can add on meatballs for another 10. And these, these meatballs are made from almost two pounds of raw grind. This super chew weighs a pound, like it's a heavy one. And both of these items, the meatballs and the super chews, you can get alone. You can just get a subscription of your meatballs delivered or your super chew delivered. You don't have to get the whole box. You can get these separately or you can add it on and put it all together. All right, thank you so much for using the question function. I see the comments coming in, but it's a lot easier if you can use that question function right there. Let's see. What about when our raw food already has 10% organ meat. I feel like I don't have any props to show you, so I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see me. Okay, so if your raw food already has 10% organ meat, that's okay, that's just a guideline. That's the minimum that you want to include. You can still feed organ meat um, for treat training as rewards. If you find that your dog's stool is getting softer or darker and you're not really happy with that consistency, what you can do is shoot us a text and ask us to restrict any organ meat. That way we can substitute it with another treat like the muscle meat or the seafoods. But generally speaking, over a four week period, even if your dog is already fed a raw diet, like my dog is, has 10% already in his food, this is not much to last over four weeks. You can definitely split that up. If you have a smaller dog, that might be more of a challenge. So completely understand. And hopefully that is uh, an easy way for you to reach us just by texting us and asking us not to include it. How much seafood, omega-3 food, omega-3 should be in their food? You know, we came up this is a seafood of the month in case you missed it, it's Capelin. So we came up with our own diet, the ancestral real diet. I like to refer to it as 6X or success. And it comes with seafood and omega-3s, which hasn't always been included in traditional raw feeding models. I like to include about 10% seafood in our dog's diet. And the reason is, Without going into the details of fatty acids um, too much, omega-3s are anti-inflammatories. They're essential in the diet. Omega-6s are also essential in the diet, but they can be inflammatory. So you feed omega-3s and omega-6s to sort of balance those fats out. Because of modern day agricultural practices and the diets that our dogs are, are um, livestock are eating, a lot of that soil has been depleted of the vitamins and minerals and fats that they need to be higher in omega-3s. And that's why we have to feed seafood, right? Everyone's like, well, it's not like dogs would naturally eat seafood. That is the primary reason. So I'd like to say, make that bowl about 10% omega-3 fatty acids. If your dog has uh, an issue with seafood, like maybe doesn't do too well on it, start slow and add in a little bit of time. There are also alternatives. In fact, you can feed grass-fed um, beef, which is higher in omega-3s than it is, uh, than the conventional beef is. And so you can add that in, or you can feed things like hemp seed or flax seed, where are gonna be other sources of omegas. There you go, Papa. Good boy. It is warm out here, but he's doing so, so great. Um, let's see. 
Is it easy to tell if the treats and chews have gone bad? Having one dog, the boxes can last quite a while in a good way. Well, I will tell you that we have, I'm at home right now, so I could probably go inside and grab it. But our very first box that we made seven years ago has not gone bad because it hasn't oxidized. It hasn't been exposed to any sort of air. And anytime we open our bags, that's when things start to go bad a little bit quickly. There is this particular smell that a fat has where it starts to go rancid. By definition of air drying, because we don't use a high temperature, we have to use really lean meats. We can't use fatty meats. And that's why you won't find a whole lot of fat on our treats or chews. But there is a very distinct smell that it has when a fat goes rancid. That said, you can prolong the shelf life of any food by keeping it in a cool, dry place. So if you don't think you're going to use your treats and shoes up, oh, look at my assistant brought our very first box. I told y'all we had it. I'm kind of scared to look in there now. <laughs> but if you want to prolong the shelf life of any of your treats and shoes, then just keep it in a cool, dry place, which most oftentimes is our refrigerator or our freezer. We generally say try to use your treats and shoes up before 60 days, but a lot of times it will be much longer. What do you guys think? You want to see our very first box? Shoot me some hearts if you want to see it. I'm going to try to get through some of these questions before I open that up. <laughs> can we pause? Yes, you can pause your box anytime. You can shoot us a text and say, I'm going out of town. Can you pause my box for the next month? I'm going to Puerto Rico. Can you send my box there? Because yes, we can. We can ship your box anywhere you want uh, within the U.S. and territory territories and Canada. So if you are traveling, we can definitely hook you up with that. Oh, I see the hearts coming in. All right. A couple more questions before I get there. I see the comments. So if you use this question function, I'll... I'll uh, hopefully see them a lot faster. Um, okay. This question is from David. Hey, David. I got your message last week. That was very, very kind of you to say and send. Um, can their chews be left outside? My dog left half the rabbit head outside and I'm wondering if I should leave it outside. You can leave it outside. I mean, let's just, let's just be real for a second. Our dogs lick their butts, right? They can sometimes eat leftovers that have sitting, been sitting in our uh, trash can. Um, street dogs survive off of food that has probably been sitting out for a long time. So if the question is, can my dog eat food that's been sitting out? Yes. And more than likely, nothing is going to happen. Worst case scenario, a little bit of loose stool. Um, but for the most part, our dogs are so incredibly resilient that eating something that isn't properly cooked or served the way that we would for ourselves is 100% okay. Earlier this week, I uh, shared stories of Icon eating his lamb head. A lot of people asked if we um, brought the lamb heads in and put them in the freezer and I said no we actually don't you know if if it's really hot I'm probably going to pick it up like if I don't want flies all over it I'll pick it up and put it in the freezer overnight but a lot of times I don't and he is living a happy healthy life it's a good question though let's see all right I have my box here two more questions before I get to it I asked about our expiration dates. Um, do you do nutritional consulting? We do, we do. So if you have a gold membership with us, which is only $17 a month, that includes a monthly nutrition consultation with one of our certified nutritionists on our team. And we are a small ass team, BT Dub, but our uh, tech team built a software for us so that we can service all of our members. And we guide you through transitioning to fresh food. We guide you through foods that you might take out of your dog's diet because you're struggling or add in. So yes, get that gold membership 
sign into your account and schedule your consultation with us. All right, here it is. This is the box from seven years ago. <laughs> oh boy. I think I saw some hearts here. Thanks, Mr. Moose Man, appreciate you. Oh my gosh, our packaging was so different. So <laughs> that was our old card. And we used to put paper in there with a cute little made with love sticker. Um, and we've got our cards. All right, let's open it up. Let me set this up real quick. Here you go, T'Challa. this over bud you gotta get out of you gotta get out, out from under there watch out good boy thank you okay this is circa 2015 we quit our jobs and moved from washington dc to san diego to start real dog box and this was the very first box that we put together These are so cute. These are printed in-house. Beef liver, pollock, chicken breast, pig ear, turkey neck, chicken feet. It's our prototype. These were the turkey necks. We used to chop them up and these are, these are airtight. We vacuum sealed these. Mussels. Okay. I'm gonna, look at these chicken feet. I am going to open this and feed one to T'Challa because I want you to know that this has been here for seven years and I am not afraid at all to feed it. Probably need some scissors. Okay, I opened it up. Seven year chew. It looks in pretty good condition to me, wouldn't you say? Like it's a nice sort of golden color. It's okay. I already opened it. <laughs> um, but this is a chicken foot. It looks pretty good. So Charlie, you wanna give that a shot? That's a seven year old foot. Right over here. actually good for you guys to see if you have a gulper like t'challa is start off by holding that chew for them so they don't just grab it and swallow it if you were listening to our lives earlier this week you know that dogs aren't meant to chew their food thoroughly they do chomp chomp swallow so it's not really a concern but hold on leave it let me show you all something else whoever says this is why cooked bones are very different from dried bones. See how that skin has remained intact? There's bone inside there, and the reason why it's safer for dogs to feed, feed to eat air-dried or raw bones is because this skin is protecting it on its way down. But if you have a gulper, hold that chew for them. You can say chew it. Yes, good boy. This was something that we worked on with T'Challa for a long time because he does like to chop food. But this is what I mean when I say choose our floss. This is getting back there. Good boy. Chew it. Yes, good boy. Just look at those pearly whites. Good job, buddy. Okay, take it. <laughs> Well, that's it. That's the chicken foot. We used to make mussels. This is turkey breast. These are the pig ears. Can't see them very well. But hopefully 
that answers your question. How long do your treats and chews last? At least seven years, baby. Okay. Um, last question here that I just saw pop up. These are dehydrated, such as sun-dried tomatoes, at what degree? Loaded question. So our treats are actually air-dried, and sun-dried tomatoes are sun-dried, typically. Um, what that means is when you air-dry something or sun-dry it, which is how we built our dryers to replicate the ancient method of preservation. Sun drying usually happens at 130 degrees and so does air drying. And the way that works is you have a heating element to maintain that temperature and you have, as you would at sun drying, some sort of airflow and exhaust. You want air to flow back and forth. And if you've seen, uh, and I'll share this with you next week if you haven't, but we have our drying grates that have holes in them and that allows for adequate airflow and we built a dryer system so that we don't exceed 130 degrees. If you see a food that has exceeded 130 degrees in drying temperature, its cellular structure has changed. And what that means is the test you can use is rehydrating, in, rehydrating them in hot water. So if you rehydrate in hot water and the chew doesn't go back to its wiggly uh, form, that means that you've used a heat above 130 degrees. A lot of times dehydrated treats will look like this. And so will cooked food. Like imagine a rotisserie chicken. If you've ever picked one up from Safeway or Costco or wherever. If you put that in water, it is just a soggy piece of chicken. It doesn't go back to its original spongy form. But if you put an air dried piece of chicken into hot water, it will go back to its original form. Great question. I think that's it. Let me scroll through the comments real, real quick. I am headed off soon to Barks and Brews. If you're local to San Diego, we have a booth set up and we are giving away a bunch of treats, a bunch of prizes, shirts, balls, you name it. We're going to be there until six o'clock this evening, but I think I got them all. Oh, Danny answered some of your questions. I appreciate you. All right, you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully see you soon at Barks and Brews. I will also be at the Roar Park Pack Walk tomorrow morning. Have a great weekend, guys. Thanks for tuning in.